it is that time of year and this came fast <laughs> today i want to talk to you guys about the f-350 dually <clears throat> and if i made a good choice between going for the f-350 versus the f-450 and what my reasoning was for that about me a little cover there that seems to be doing all right i also removed the license plate brackets because i don't like how it covers up the letters on the top and the bottom i also don't like how loose it is now cool um so i might have to figure that one out but uh it's definitely crooked <laughs> We're going to go for a drive, and I'm going to take the Tesla today because why buy diesel when you don't have to? And uh, we're going to talk about the dually and my reasons for getting it. While we're on the topic of towing and trucks, um, I put the cover back on, and it still doesn't set 100% right. You can see there's a lip here. Where's my finger? Right there. Versus that side's flush. And I'm assuming it's probably user error, but... Um, I also left the hitch sitting out here because it got grease on it and I didn't want it back in the car with grease on it. So I'll have to clean that up. So real quick on the topic of towing before we begin with the actual video of the truck. Um, you know, obviously the truck is a towing vehicle. That's what it does. That's what it does best. So um, now that I know my Tesla can tow, am I more likely to tow my four-wheeler and trailer with my car versus my truck? Because it would be for much cheaper to do it. Um, no, because of just how inconvenient it is to do everything. You know, the car doesn't look that great with a hitch sticking out of it every single day, even when it's not being used. And um, the truck looks great. I mean, that's, that's what it looks, you know, <laughs> that, that just adds to the look. It makes it look great because that's what it's, for. it's for towing a uh, big shiny hitch out the back makes it look really good and for the car it just it, the looks aren't there it's not uh it's not what it's designed for it's a nice energy efficient electric car and um you know towing is not its forte i guess we'll say so um to have to take the cover off every time we want to tow and install the hitch and deal with that and there's grease everywhere i mean they they did not um they didn't do a poor job at, at lubricating everything in this car when they built it because um they ever even where the hitch goes up into the car is very very lubricated and <laughs> it's just messy <laughs> and um then you know obviously you want to lubricate your ball and everything like you've seen on the last clip there so there's a lot to it and then you got to clean it up and, and then re-lubricate it every time you use it it's it's kind of a mess truck um i have a ball cover there's grease under the cover that's what it's for um you know take it off there it is it's already ready to go so yeah um probably not going to tow with the car now actually uh next time i need to take the four-wheeler down to the repair shop maybe for like an oil change or something i'm gonna try to take the car because it is 110 miles round trip and um the car technically um should be able to do it but uh maybe that's not a great idea i don't know there's a supercharger down there we can figure it out so um yeah just want to i just want to see you know how it does i think long trips it's going to do better than short trips and the test that i did the other day was only 30 miles round trip it wasn't long enough to really get a solid like long distance towing rating you're going to get far worse you know doing sudden accelerations and getting on and off the interstate than you are just cruising constantly so all right let's get to the point so did I buy the right truck? So um, there were a couple of factors that played in when I was looking at 350 versus 450. Um, the point of getting the truck to begin with was because I wanted to do some sort of camping. I wanted to buy a fifth wheel RV and do some traveling, maybe you know try some local places here. And then uh, if I'm comfortable with it and uncomfortable with driving it, um, we would go somewhere a little further, you know, maybe across the country, who knows? Um, and that's, who knows if that's even happening at this point. Um, I got other things going on and I've got to figure out like, you know, I got to prioritize the money 
and right now a camper is not a priority, so I'm probably not doing it anytime soon. Anyway, um, two major things, well, I mean, they're two, two major trucks, so, um, everyone who does RVing and camping and traveling the world always says, go with the 450, it's better, go with the 450, and that's, that's an opinion, sorry, had some traffic there I had to deal with for a second, that's an opinion, and that's great, everybody's entitled to their opinion, but to give me your opinion, you have to tell me why your opinion is right. And no one could tell me why it was better. They just said it's better. And um, if you really look at it, if you break it down on paper, the 350 is better because it can tow more weight. It can handle everything better, in my opinion. Uh, more payload, everything. So there were a few major deciding factors. Uh, one was tires. The F450 uses a 19 and a half inch commercial grade tire. That's great until you need tires because now you have to find a truck stop that does tire service. You have to find a, a truck center that does commercial tires. You can't go to discount tire and buy commercial 19 and a half inch tires and they actually be in stock. That's not a thing. Um, and then Problem number two we're looking at is what do you do if you have a blowout? You know, like you're in the middle of nowhere, you've got to pay a tow truck, that's not going to be great. So F350 uses a 17 inch regular tire that you can get from anybody. Discount tire is going to be my choice. Uh, but you know, you're out in the middle of nowhere and there's, there's a discount tire. Good. You just go there and get it. You know, there's no questions asked. There's no problems. You just go get the tire. Um, so tires, and then obviously the cost of tires, um, it's a lot more expensive to replace a commercial tire than it is a regular everyday tire. So tires, payload is another one. And both trucks are rated at 14,000 gross vehicle weight rating GVWR. Uh, and that's, that's great. But, um, one of those two trucks weighs more than the other. So the F450 is going to actually weigh about a thousand pounds more than an F350, which will cut your payload and yeah, not be great. So that was another reason that I decided, you know, like I don't know what I'm going to be hauling. I don't know, obviously a camper, you know, I'm, I'm not going to go over, I don't have to worry about no weight rating on that because campers are pretty much exempt from CDL requirements. But, um, you know, I, I didn't know what I may want to haul with the truck. And if my payload is a thousand pounds lower than the other option, then that, that would definitely cause an issue for me. Especially, you never know. I may want to, I, I doubt I ever will, but say I take it to the rock quarry and get a load of rocks. You know, I don't want to be able, I don't want to be a thousand pounds overweight versus you know, I would have been fine if I'd went the other way. Um, some of the pros though, on the F450, the turning radius. So, um, in an F450, you're going to get way better turning radius than you would in an F350. And that's just a well-known fact. Um, and that almost had me convinced, uh, because I watched some YouTube videos of people comparing and I was like, Ew, wow, that's really bad, actually. If you compared the two, it was it was pretty bad. So um, it almost had me change my mind and call the dealer and change it to a 450 because I was like, you know, the extra uh, cost in tires is going to um, make up for the fact that I don't have to turn so wide every time I turn. Um, I decided not to do that because although that was a plus, the, the negatives outweighed that one plus. And really that's the only plus with that truck is the turning radius. I was okay with that. I, I can deal with that. Um, and honestly, since I've gotten the truck, I don't, I don't have a problem turning. I mean, I, when I bought it, the day I bought it, I took it on a four lane road and made a U-turn. And yeah, it took quite a bit. It took four lanes, but, um, you know, you learn to adapt to stuff like that. You learn to drive it. It's not that big of a deal. And looking back now, 
I have no regrets. I mean, when I bought the truck, I, I, I had regrets for like the first week because I was like, wow, should I really have gone with that? And who knows, when I start towing a camper, I may change my mind and be like, yeah, I, I really do need that turning radius just to back it in places. But right now, I'm more than happy with it. I think it's a good truck. I think it's serving a good purpose. And, um, you know, may upgrade to a, a 23 or a 24 when the time comes. But right now, um, I'm going to keep it and uh, we'll see what happens. So, really happy with the F-350 purchase. And uh, I don't think an F-450 makes logical sense. I mean, yeah, it's technically built tougher and it's technically built to handle a lot more weight. But when you're limited to that 14,000 GVWR, that's it. You're stuck there. You have to stay there. So, it's not that beneficial. Another big factor on the F450 versus the 350 was, you know, obviously it's built stronger, bigger, better. It's going to ride rougher, especially empty. And um, I, you know, I had the Ram for a little while. I, I liked the Ram, but it also had a lot of issues. Um, and it was a very rough ride. And I was like, if, if the F450 is even remotely comparable to the Ram that I had, I don't want that. Um, and I knew the F350, you know, cheaper tires, it's not going to hurt to air them down a little bit. You know, a lot of people say, oh, well, you start airing your tires down, you're going to wear out the sides of the tires. Okay, cool. I can buy new tires. Uh, they're not that expensive compared to what the F450 tires are going to be. So you can air them down and really help your ride. I actually haven't had to. I've not had any issues at all with mine. Ride comfort is actually really good, which I did not expect considering it does not have air suspension and the Ram did. The Ram was everything I wanted. I looked for it. I, I found it. I found, I found it. I found the exact one that I wanted and I drove four hours to go get it. And unfortunately it was one of those models, you know, where they just slapped it together. And probably didn't even have the right chips. They're just like, yeah, just use these. It'll work. You know, um, air suspension would never air down. It was at a hundred percent max PSI all the time uh, like you were towing but um, you weren't towing and it would just beat the crap out of you driving down the road the smallest little bump you were all over the road I took it to Ram I told them there was an issue I told them I can't even manually override it to release the air pressure there's a button to do that wouldn't do it and um, they said yep yeah, there's definitely a problem but the truck's too new so we don't have parts for it so just drive it. And, you know, the icing on the cake for the Ram was uh, when they sent a letter and said, hey, you know, your wheels could fall off, but, um, yeah, you'll be fine. <laughs> we don't have a fix for it. You know, we, we can't put new, uh, new lug nuts on it or whatever, you know, the bolts. I don't know. Anyway, we can't fix it uh, right yet. So just keep driving. You're fine. But they might fall off. <laughs> And, uh, and, and, you know, to make things worse, I, at that point, had decided that I just didn't want to ram anymore. Took it back to them and said, hey, you know, what do you give me for this? And they said, we don't want it. It has a recall and we can't fix it. What? What? So you told me you sold me a piece of junk and now you don't want it back. Cool. So, yeah. Um, changed my mind on that right quick. But yeah, um, I will I will consider another Ram in the future if and when they ever decide to actually refresh it. Um, I don't have a problem with the Cummins uh, six-cylinder engines. Um, engine brake is really strong on those, and I like that. I do think that it would benefit... This guy likes music in front of me, if you can tell. I do think that it will benefit from a 10-speed automatic transmission instead of a 6. Uh, and the interior really, really needs a refresh. I loved my 1500, but my 3500, not a fan. Um, we're talking about a 4th gen interior in a truck that they call a 5th gen, and that's just not, it's not a 5th gen. Maybe it's a 4.5 gen, but not a 5th. And uh, it just wasn't that good. So I, um, I'm all about it. You know, if they do the refresh, they actually make it a nice truck. Um, I'll consider trading up into that instead of another Ford. But uh, we'll see. We'll see. 